And everybody, welcome back to Talk Me Tarashek Podcast. My name is Will Tarashek. Not wearing a hat today. Some do- some doofus on YouTube told me not to wear a hat indoors. So, hey, I read the comments. So, just like anyone else says you shouldn't, I say you should until you can't. So, my name is Will Tarashek. T's and Thomas, A-R-A-S-H-U-K. Comment on all of our YouTube videos. I do read them and interact, interact with them. You can see my hair like this. kind of annoying me. So, I'm going to push that back right here. If you're on the audio, I apologize. Go watch the video on YouTube. My guest today is Matt Tursey. He is a friend. He's a fraternity brother. And he is a man of mystery. I'm going to say that because there's this a lot. We got a lot to catch up on. So, Mr. Tercy Dorsey, a.k.a. Dorsey, welcome to the podcast, my friend. It's good to talk to you. It's been a while. Yeah, Will. How you doing? I'm surviving, man. It is, it is an interesting, crazy, insane world out there. There's a <laughs> lot going on. But, hey, man, that's why I want a yeah. podcast to talk about it last week. Big thank you to my guest, Desmond Ryan, from last week. Um, he is, if you missed it, he is a former police detective up in Canada around the Toronto area. We had a great conversation about an hour and a half talking about this policing in the United States as a Canada. I got to groom a little bit on authoritarianism and, uh, Trudeau didn't mention blackface. I forgot to mention a blackface, but Hey, I'll bring him back. It's conversation for another day. So thank you again to Desmond, my guest, but Tercy, please, uh, I know you, but my audience doesn't really know you. My mom doesn't know you. So introduce yourself to my mother, please. Man, your mom doesn't know me. All right. So, um, yeah, my name is Matt Tercy. I know Will, a.k.a. Daffy, Daffy from uh, Tau Ups on Fi at Hofstra University. He is my big brother, actually, from the fraternity. Um, I graduated in 2019, and then, uh, you know, I'm doing some videography. I'm a DJ. I, uh, I'm doing some acting stuff, some VO stuff, and then I joined the Army in 2021. I'm coming up with my two-year anniversary in the Army Reserves. Um, yeah, and my time as in TEP was uh, president, secretary, or scribe, president, a.k.a. chancellor. Uh, I'm on the National Board of Directors for the past three and a half years and uh i created founded and am the chancellor slash president of the alumni club at for hofstra university yeah there's a lot there's a lot to dive into greek life i don't know where to start with greek life but greek life for me um was life-changing you know there is there's few things in my life where i can say okay there's before and after this Right, there's before high school and there's after high school for various reasons. There's before college and after college for even more various reasons. But a little more specific, there's life before TEP and then there's life after TEP. And who I became after TEP is just a completely different person from what I was prior to TEP, which is really the reason why I joined a fraternity. Because, you know, me in high school, I had no idea what a fraternity was. Me in college, I had no idea what a fraternity was. Like, I, 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 was, I went a whole year freshman year with, like, without even interacting or knowing anything about Greek life. And then it was, like, first semester, sophomore year, my buddy uh, brought me around Pike. And I was like, oh, Greek yeah. life. Like, this is an actual thing. And then I learned what dues were. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a fun Yeah, but you learn about that after you join. You yeah, they tell, they, tell you you they, they tell you before it's too late because we all broke college because I think it was, was it 250 or 450 a semester? Uh, it's, it was 450 for us. I think 250 went to national. 250, okay. That's what it was. So yeah, it was, yeah, it was split. Half went to nationals because it's a business. You know, I was talking to Coney not so long yeah. ago. Shout out to Coney. And he's just like, because, uh, oh, you know, yeah. Queens College got booted um, from campus because they just weren't. Oh, yeah. Av- allegedly, they just weren't paying anything. And Coney's like, at the end of the day, our tep's a business. And I was like, fuck. That's true. <laughs> At the end of the day, you really do pay to have yeah. friends. I mean, that is, that is a very mean way of saying it, but it's true. You do pay to have friends. Kind of. I mean, like, so you have to also understand, like, from a national standpoint, we have uh, staff on hand, so we pay three people to continue growing the fraternity. And, yeah, you can say you're paying for friends, but you're also paying. I mean, you said it yourself. Like, you after TEP compared to you during TEP to p- compared to you before TEP are different but the person you are after TEP, would that still be the same person you are if you weren't in TEP? Did you follow me? Like TEP still created oh, the person that you yeah, are. Yeah. Well, at, for at, good, for better or worse. But at, at my at my core, I'm still the same. Like I'm just the same overextending goofball weirdo who says strange things. Like that's never going to change, yeah. regardless. But you know, TEP helped me form my identity. It helped me find and refine who I truly was, and made me comfortable. Being who I was. And the group of guys we had, you know, I say we pay for friends, but it's worth every penny if it's true. Yeah, um, yeah. Because, you know, some of them are still my best friends. You know, Jared and I founded a fucking company based off it. 
So yep. there is this crazy things that the fraternity does, but at the core, would I still be the same person? Well, probably would have gotten to somewhere else, but Tep definitely helped along the way. Yeah, I mean, being in a fraternity overall is definitely a, a life-changing experience when you're in college and then when you come out of college, even just with the alumni connections and just the people you meet, as you said, it's it's crazy. But, um, you know, people are starting to miss that. We can see from a national standpoint coming out of COVID, people really want to go back into the uh, fraternity life just because during COVID, they didn't get to see people. I mean, during COVID, I knew people that joined fraternities and they didn't even meet the brothers. That's weird. I, I don't yeah. know if I would have joined a fraternity no. without meeting them. Like, no, it, it would, not. Yeah, it's like you and I right now, if we never met and we're just talking like this, that's how they joined the fraternity. Ugh. I mean, it's very strange, but I they mean, did it. You you can form connections with people over over Zoom, like I am going to go back to my podcast last week with Desmond's. Um, I am talking this up very highly. It is one of my top five favorites of all time. And I don't say that lightly because I've done almost 500 of these. Actually, no, I've done more than 500 podcasts in my lifetime. So that is one of my top five. But like, I never met the guy. He reached out to me. No idea who he was. He's like, I got a book and I got this I can talk about. I was like, great, let's do it. And you can form that connection over Zoom, but it is way different in person, obviously. Yeah. Like some, like, yeah. some, of, the, some of those guys, like Waldo, um, one of my best friends in the entire world, man, I still respect and look up to to this day. And even in yeah. multiple aspects of life, in college, I looked up to him for this. And then after college, I looked up to him because he's also a business owner. So I'm still kind of following in his footsteps as I was back in college. You know, it's kind of funny yeah. how that works out. Yeah. I mean, just seeing from the alumni club, I've met so many guys from the 80s onwards. And some of these guys have some great careers that they yeah. have done finished completed on a second career i mean from the national standpoint on the board we have people that were like in congress for years really i mean yeah it's it's crazy the people that you meet and you're like oh you were a tap and they're like yeah i didn't promote myself as being a tap but yeah. it helped me a lot continue on with their career so it's, it's really cool the people that you meet and the people that you grow up with as you said waldo is doing some great stuff so and then you have nash stuff. you have you axel i mean it's it's kind of crazy things that i'm seeing us do when we were all there well there are there are but, plenty of famous tops on fives out there like adam sandler being one of the most famous which is hilarious he's also, not a tap there's not a tap? there's no there's no record of him being oh, a tap oh, please. Oh, such a debbie is... downer such a debbie downer turn yeah Come on. you know I what know. Hey, let me got... have this he's a tap in my mind he's a tap in my heart he's a tap in we... com's heart he's a tap too we got larry david we, we got do have larry... Oh, we got um, springer we got springer too springer springer used to bring down taps in like tour buses to his uh show yeah, and Kelly just and, uh, pay Kelly. for them for free mm -hmm. yeah it would yeah and it would have been uh great time he sang cowboys all the time to people it was yeah yeah he was a good one um who else do we have <sighs> i forget the other guys that we have that were uh springer's a, good alum. One. springer's a big one yeah uh i'm still saying i'm sandler and uh i forget the other guy you said <laughs> but he's a big one too math um, franco is another one okay interesting yeah. now i always i always debate like when do i take tep off my resume right because you know when you're when you're i'm 28 now when I just graduated college, yes, I have it on there. But I don't think there's ever a reason to take it off other than there's, there's always going to be a stigma with Greek life, whether you like it or not. Um, someone's going to have that stigma, but whatever. You, it, it, but it can also help you. Like if, I'm, if I'm applying, for, if I'm applying right. for a job or if I'm, if I'm hiring for a job, because I'm eventually going to hire interns, eventually staff, if I see Greek life, I'm going to immediately go, oh, that's cool, and I'm going to ask them about it. And yeah, if, I, if, I mean, and I don't see it, it's kind of like, well, who cares? It, it's a crapshoot. It really is. But if as long as you keep it to a business perspective, because you were chancellor, et cetera, et cetera, whatever else you did before that. I mean, if you keep it to that perspective, it helps a lot. Like, but um, I mean, I know we have some people that joined the Hofstra Tep fraternity. Um, Chris Fusco, if you remember him, he came in and he was like, yeah, I know Tep because my dad's friend who owns a business had a like I think the Tep bridge builder or something on his desk and he was like that I just wanted to join Tep because I saw it growing up so it definitely does help I would say keep it on your resume until you have other stuff that can supersede it but well, I like I included my education right like education yeah. Hofstra University 2013 to 17 that's when I graduated 2017 yeah yeah Twice, yeah yeah 2017 so like yeah. under that I'll put you know tops on five fraternity president chancellor fucking whatever yep. 
And other than that, it yeah. is silly. It, it stays out because, you know, fraternity life. Yeah, we joined for partying too. Yeah, we joined for girls yeah. too. Duh. <laughs> like, come on now. Yeah. It's, like, it's, all, it's called a spade a spade here. You, 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 go, yeah. for, you, go, you, go, for the, you go for the three Bs and the three Ps. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, that's, what, that's the only reason why you joined a drink life. It's, yeah. And it helps. It, it, it helps. It, it exposes you to people of the same and opposite sex. Whether no matter yeah. what you're into. And, you know, like, what, something about TEP, like, we were known as the misfits. We were known as the, the oddballs on campus, which is what I loved about us. Because when people think Greek life, like, you said me earlier, you join a, you could join a fraternity without ever meeting someone. Well, down south, I don't think yeah. it's that uncommon because my sister, not my sister, my cousin, I don't have a sister. My cousin um, went to, I forget the university, but she was... I think it should, it might have been an Alpha Phi. She's going to kill me or a DG. She's going to okay. kill me when she, if she listens to this. But she joined a sorority <laughs> and her pledge class was like 45 girls. And I was like, wow, our fraternity yeah. was 18 at the height, yeah. right? So yeah. she, she was just like, I didn't really know a lot of the girls I pledged with or in a sorority. So it's just like, well, that makes, that makes sense. There's fucking so many of you. Um, yeah, well, my girl, I mean, that's, but all, all sororities, like, south, yeah. north, like, no matter what, they're all fine. AOB at Hofstra, I mean, they have, like, 60-plus people And they're local. All the time. Like, they're not, like, a national yeah. organization. They're very, very local to Long Island. Yeah, so that's that's a big thing. Fraternities definitely have it harder, but in the south, fraternities thrive a little bit more yeah. than they do up in the northeast, especially. Um, but why do you think that yeah. is? Like, someone who works... So close to Greek life still is involved in nationals. Talks to all these uh, older gentlemen, older brothers. Why do you think in the north it's just not as big? Because in the south, it's you know it's 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 still huge, especially with football. Yeah, well, so it depends on the college, right? So every college has a different thing. Some of them have Greek row, where the college has a row of houses for Greek life. So, I mean, that's so easy to recruit people. Um, and some of these houses go for millions of dollars. It's just crazy how much money they have. Right. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, some of them have like their own chef and st it's really crazy what they push. But in the Northeast, they usually don't have that. There's usually, I mean, Hofstra, there's nowhere to build a Greek row. There's just nowhere to, unless you're taking away from the residents nearby. Buffalo, same thing. There's not a whole bunch of areas to do that in the Northeast. Um, so I think they're struggling. To, and also colleges are trying to push it. As you said, there's such a bad stigma to Greek life that they're trying to push it away rather than embrace it. And we see colleges that are embracing it. Yeah, of course, everyone has their issues, but they're doing a lot better. Uh, I mean, it's proven that like people's uh, mentality is just better when they're in Greek life. There's less depression, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think colleges need to stop pushing it away and start bringing it into a good culture um they, uh, greek life also raises the most money on campus for philanthropies i mean that was a big thing when we were at hofstra it was like you can join a philanthropic group or you can join a fraternity where you have fun and you do a ton of philanthropy we're doing we're doing street cleans every week it took like an hour or whatever it was and it was a great time whether or not we drank the night before and we're trying to just make yeah, it through the morning we, was a different we cleaned story up but... our own mess for charity purposes right but hey yeah i mean it's, it yeah, works. It's, it's, it works. The school loved it. The, the police loved it. Yeah. And the local residents didn't complain about us as much. They always waved high. We, like, I think after you left, some of them would bring us like some food and stuff like that, saying thank you. It was a great time. We had yeah. a great time doing it that. Was like, it was every so. every Saturday or Sunday morning. It was like, hey, it was, let's just go pick up the trash. That Sometimes, most of the time, not even Greek life, because like, we would go up up towards uh, the parkway where all the bars were, where, where the real trash and the real awful shit was and we just pick up like, the solo cups the cans and you know walk over the vomit you know like, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that but you know yeah. it was, and that and that that gave us good grace with the school um and it was just it was just it was a very good thing and it was just something that was just easy to do for philanthropy and then we had the polar plunge which we raised we always yeah. raised a bunch of money um we had the, the event i always forgot about the other uh, shake or rake Shaker Rake, yeah, we did that. I don't remember what we were supposed to do at Shaker Rake, but there was stuff like that. So, yeah, Flam Flam yeah. was always involved, and ours was um, Le 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 National Leukemia Foundation was the big one for us. It changed. It, I know it changed. Then, but, yeah. We did it change, too. Right now, uh, nationally, it's Our Military Kids, which is an organization that helps military families 
um, when their loved ones are deployed overseas or passed away, whatever the may- case may be, kind of help them with school books, schooling in general, tutoring, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's where our TEP national fraternity or national philanthropy is, is our military kids. I mean, it's it's still, the, the National Leukemia Foundation is still a, a charity, I think. About. Like, everyone, yep. has, everyone says, where should we donate money to? I go, yeah, National Leukemia Foundation. It's just, it's what I know, right? It's what yep. was was beaten into me, metaphorically, of course, um, into like, this is what we give money to, because, you know, yeah. leukemia. I mean, probably over the course of your tenure at Hofstra, we probably raised almost $10,000 for National Leukemia. Like, I, and maybe a little bit less, but Somewhere around there, we raised a lot of money for it. Um, I know the alumni club, we raise about $2,000 every year for our military kids. Um, and Hofstra right now, the undergraduates, they raise money every year too, but I'm not sure what, I think they're going to our military kids too. I'm just not sure how much they've raised. But yeah, that, that was that was one of my favorite point, uh, times doing stuff at Hofstra was just doing the philanthropy stuff. It was, was It was a real shift at Hofstra when we were undergrad because, I mean, it's for good reason. You know, I mentioned earlier and I mentioned earlier that, you know, Hofstra's northern schools are trying to push out Greek life. Hofstra, yep. I understand, right? They made national news for- A few times. A few, Mo- I, a few times in the same semester. Yeah. For yeah. the most disgusting, despicable things. I'm not going to get the details because it's not, you can Google it. You can just Google Hofstra Sig Pi. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you can, you, yeah. can get, you can get the details. Or- or a pie. Yeah, I remember my my yeah. senior year. I go. I read the story. I saw the videos, and I go, "Wait, you guys?" I just looked around, and I was like, "You guys actually like you you do that? Like <laughs> you yeah, actually that was did my, that?" Yeah, like, that was you know, my like reaction us, too. Our, our our pledging process. We're not gonna give away any, any secrets, but like you know, we got hazed, but it was not physical, verbal. Abuse. It wasn't aggressive. We no. just had to learn what we needed to learn, and that was about it. And if we, like, it, it, I mean, we, we had, um, Sammy also had an issue, I think, after yeah, you were gone. they did. And they got kicked off, and, like, it was my same reaction. I was like, Sammy and Tep were always, like, very similar very to each other. Very tight. And yeah. I was like, you guys are, and what the craziest thing was, they got kicked off because of a pledge that was pledging us the semester before and dropped out. He was pledging us. He dropped out. He went to Sammy the next semester. He got hazed and he told the school, which then showed the school that, well, I guess Tep wasn't doing anything because he obviously didn't yeah, tell yeah, anything he, on, he didn't us. on us. And we're like, yeah. He didn't rat on us. So it's, it's, it's crazy that I see that. And I mean, you see it all over the place, but it's not as, it makes national news. And so it makes fraternities look bad, but it doesn't right. happen as I mean, often as, as, it, as it should. Right, that I'm not saying right. well, it should make national news because the what people do is disgusting, right? I mean, right, yeah. It's like why would yeah, you do but, that to somebody? It's that's not what it was about. Like for us, pledging to me was the greatest thing I've ever done that I'll never do again. I would if you if I had to go too. back, I would do it, but I would never do that again. It was I, an amazing experience. I got so close. Yeah, yeah. And I the mean, five you had of five, us, the five of us. Yeah, it was, it was me, Dubs, Fry, Nemo, and Dexter. Yeah, the five and, of us were like like very very tight throughout throughout yeah. our our tenure at Hofstra. Yeah, we're still I mean, that tight. was same with that was same with my pledge class. We yeah. were eight brothers eight that joined together, and we were super tight until we had some that had to drop out and stuff like that. But I still talked to a lot of them. So I mean, that was my favorite part of the entire tep. Like my tenure at tep was just the pledging process. That was like yeah. six weeks, if that, and then we were like under investigation for nothing for like our last week. And oh, that was the my, school that was, was like, that was my fault. Uh, no, no, well, no. That, that was when I was pledging. Uh, actually, uh, when we went under investigation, yeah. that might've also been my fault. I don't remember what we went under investigation <laughs> for, but we didn't do anything, this, but my mouth probably got us in trouble. The school didn't know either. And they're like, Oh, we didn't even know you were under investigation, but that was like, God, it, what was it? I don't remember what it was. What did we, what did we do? I, I never found out the full story, but I was told that someone's mom said something to someone oh, at the school. Oh, I remember. That was not my fault. That was not my fault. I, don't, I remember whose yeah. fault it was, but I remember what was mine. So when, but, I, when I was pledging, what happened to us was, because we, we had, um was it PC, Pledge Central, with like, the, like, with like the, all, yeah. all, of, all of Greek life. They had like those meetings, and then we, yep. had to give a, we had to give a presentation. So the five of us didn't do it because we were like, wait, we're supposed to actually like 
do it. Do so something. Yeah. while like Sammy or the sororities are present presenting, where me and like Dubs are in the back and Nemo and just like writing something up, and like who's gonna present? I'm like, well, I guess I'll do it. I I can talk in front of people. Sure, I got a I got a podcast. I'm starting. I'll do it. Um, and it's funny. I actually started the podcast the same week I joined. I actually started pledging tap, which is hilarious. To him, it's yeah. been that long. Yeah, those those two actually go coincide one one another. Two things that changed my life in the Bro. same month: tap and podcasting. <laughs> Um, so I go up there and like, I'm giving this presentation and like hazing comes up and I go, Hey, yeah, if you're being hazed, uh, my mind goes blank and I just blow it out. <laughs> just keep it to yourself. <laughs> like, yeah. And that's, that's what I say to all of Greek life. Oh God. Plus, yeah. plus, uh, like the school administrators and, yeah. and the school administrator, God bless her heart, took it the right way, which meaning she didn't think I meant, she didn't think that I was getting like hazed. But Edwin in Greek life was like, oh, God. shit, Tep's, get, Tep's hating the shit out of people. Which the oh, funny oh part God. was, no, no, no. All of them were most likely doing it while we weren't. So, like, yeah. .com had to go into, like, the office and, like, <laughs> investigation. And nothing happened because they weren't getting hazed like that. So, but it was yeah. just like this oh fucking kid. God. This fucking kid almost cost us the biggest Who? pledge class Tep had in, like, five years. That was, like, Sarah? Was that her name? Sarah? Sarah it, or something that yeah, was it, it, I think something like that. It was no, she might have been the next semester. Uh, it was someone okay. else before her, and then she left. Okay, and then Sarah, and then Sarah came in. But yeah, they've changed like five times. So yeah, crazy. So wow. a reason yeah. a reason I joined TEP was because it was so small, and uh, <laughs> and Pike denied me. Um, yeah, yeah which I say you denied me. Which I'm which I'm glad I didn't join Pike because I found out what they do to their kids, and I wouldn't have done that. Um, but. That being said, the Pike guys, we always close close with them. A lot of great guys. Um, a lot of them are doing well today, which is great to hear. But yeah, I joined TEP because, you know, small group of guys. And coincidentally, the Meadowbrook House, um, that first semester of my sophomore year, uh, me and my friends who ended up leaving Hofstra would just go out and we'd always end up at the fraternity house at, at 75 Meadowbrook. And yep. I always had the most fun there. Uh I was leave it that I had a lot of fun at that house. Yeah, and, I mean, but go ahead. sorry, keep oh, go ahead. Going. I was gonna say, like, as you said, it's funny how like you join a fraternity, but then you make friends with other people in other fraternities, and you stay very cl- like. I have some of my best friends that weren't in TEP; they were in another fraternity that I met through fraternity life, and that cohesiveness, whatever that word could be, but it. it it's really cool to see that like everyone kind of still works together, but then God forbid there's a competition in anything. Then is you'll see the fraternities go at it a little bit. Like when we had Greek, Greek, Greek week, is Greek, that what it's Greek, called? Greek, Greek week got a little heated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But a, then I a, think a few people were doing a little bit before flag football. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, but it changed <laughs> after that. I mean, then it wasn't fraternity against fraternity. Then it was like two fraternities and a sorority against fraternity. It was weird. Well, yeah, people getting but, booted and fraternities were getting smaller. So they had to kind of combine them. Yeah. They they team us up with uh, our sorority, and we would do co Greek week, which that was fine. You know, co ed sports for Greek week yeah. sounded like a great idea to me for the most part. Keep it fun. Yeah, well, I think a lot of things are going to start going co ed at some point, no matter what. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't know if I like the I don't know if I like the word, the sound of that, but yeah, I joined. So anyway, I joined Tep. Yeah, I joined Tep because of a small group of guys and a bunch of misfits. Uh, you, Matt Tercy, why did, why did you join Tep? Um, I joined Tep Waldo, because I didn't feel like Waldo. Uh, yeah. pledged you, pledged you hard. He pledged most of you guys. Yeah, he pledged uh the eight of my pledge brothers, but also he was the reason why I joined. I mean, like he, I just he asked me to hang out, and that's how I started hanging out at the Tep house. Was I just hanging out with him my freshman year of college, trying to make friends, and that's literally how it happened. And I was talking to SAE as well. I had two or three friends that joined SAE when I was a freshman, and. I didn't really vibe with them very much. And so Tep gave me a bid and I was like, I never really thought about joining Tep. I just was hanging out with them. And then uh, I forget who it was, maybe Nemo or Bishop or someone came up to me and they got friendly with me too. And I was like, yeah, why why the hell not join the fraternity and see what it's all about? Talking to my parents saying, hey, I need $450 extra a month to join a fraternity was a little bit of a tough sell, but it worked. So um yeah, and then, you know, I left the fraternity for, what, a semester, a year after I went into yeah. the fraternity. So that was, um, and then again, I came right back when uh, 
I want to say it was Waldo again. It might have been you or Waldo that said, Tercy, if you're having issues in the fraternity, just speak up and say your mind instead of closing down and yeah. leaving. Yeah, hash it out. And I joined back. And I joined back and did exactly that. And it's worked out for me ever since. And now I literally speak my mind when I have issues because of that one semester that I left. I, rem- I remember so. that because that was my senior year. Uh, we were in the other house. Waldo and I lived together up on the top floor. So, you know, we talk, yeah. we talk about that shit often. And um, it was you and Josh. You guys, yeah. were, you, you were having issues. Um, there was never much drama in TEP. You know, me and Kevin yeah. had drama because we lived together. And it's just... We just butted heads, but that's what that's what pledge that brothers happens. do. And you butted heads yeah. a lot of pledge brothers, but you know there wasn't much drama. But somehow Thursday was yeah. always revolved around you, whether it was yeah, whether it was you and we know, or is the whole idea of the composite, which we know. Uh, it was yeah. just it just kind of swirled up, and I'm just like sitting there as present. Listen, man, I have so much fucking drama. Figure your shit out, and uh. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Yeah. What? Made it still you... revolves around me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the drama right. doesn't stop. Drama doesn't so. stop. So, like, what? What made you make the decision to leave? Because, like, yeah, it was shocking. I didn't want to see you go, but from your perspective, you know, I put the ball in your court. It's like I get it. You know, I understand your frustrations. I hear your frustrations, whether it's personal, financial, what have you. So, like, when you said I gotta go, I was just like, hey, man, no hard feelings. I understand. If I were you, I'd probably also go. But from your perspective, you know, leading a fraternity isn't something that's really talked about or even brought up as often. Because I don't even know how often it happens other than they fail out. But no, you left of your own volition. So what what was going through your mind? So, I mean, a lot of people leave fraternities because of, as you said, like they fail out, they leave school. Josh left the school completely, never came back to the school. I mean, we had someone else that leave, left the school. For me personally, as you said, I was feeling berated all the time. And I was feeling like people didn't care about my feelings, didn't care about me being there, didn't want me there. Everything I tried to do was just uh, like I did a composite that ended up really crappy. I still have the composite, by the way, somewhere. I I bet you do. And you still still can't spell Nash's name right, by the way, his last name. Never, never spell his name right. And I know how to spell it. I just never spell it right for some reason. And I always double check it, too. And it's always so wrong. Spell it right now. M O. R R E R M O M O O R E R. Yes. There we go. More is more. more with two O's and an more. E-R. more. Yeah. And yeah. More. I always spelt as M O R R E R. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Which I how it's pronounced? Yeah. Nicest. More. But yeah, you, spell, you always spell his name wrong. I'm glad you still have the composite. Uh, you saw oh, the yeah. one. You saw the one you took away from me. <laughs> Someone took away from me. I didn't take one away from you. Well, so I'll tell a story after. I right? continue a story about leaving. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, it was really just I I made a terrible composite and I f- was berated. I was at about five hundred dollars, and then that same week I lost my great grandfather's ring, which to get that back I had to pay another five hundred dollars to Ooh, someone else. I did not know that. Yeah, it was a really really bad week for me, and then you know, Tep brothers will be brothers, and I was an only child growing up, and I was not used to getting berated by brothers. And it was mean and aggressive. I was an eight. I was a music business major. I was in eight different ensembles that semester. I was getting home at like ten o'clock at night every night. Couldn't go to the house. People were complaining because I couldn't go to the house. I was exhausted, and people. I didn't see people wanting to listen to me or listen to my end of the story. So I, I just said, you know what? I talked to Josh. Josh was leaving. I was like, awesome. So I don't have to leave by myself. And I took that and I went with it. And then. Um, as the semester that I was out was ending, I saw Dexter, who I stayed close with because he was the, who's that little bullshit security guard that the dorms, what is that called? What? what? Oh, P-Safe? No, yeah, what, what, what he, he was like yeah. P-Safe. Oh, he was one of the people that worked in the doors. Roughly, yeah, yeah, so. Like, just, just swipe the key card in and whatnot. I don't, I forget what yeah. you're called, but yeah, one of those people. Yeah. So I saw him and he, you know, I saw him throughout the semester. He and I got close and uh, he asked me towards the end of the semester, are you coming back? And I was like, I don't know. And then I texted him afterwards. I was like, yeah. And really I came back because I felt like I didn't have friendships anymore that were as tight as they were in TEP. And TEP ignored me other than Dexter, really. I mean, I didn't talk to anyone. And a lot of them still, Waldo doesn't talk to me. McLeod doesn't talk to me. I have a lot of them that held a personal grudge and I have tried every every day since to try to get them on my side and they still will not get on my side. I'm like, 
I, there's not much more I can do. And so, and leave them be. You know, yeah, that's all. You, yeah, that's all you can do. You know, some some people just don't get along. You know, there's people from Hofstra I'd rather not see again and not talk to again, and I won't. Or yeah, if I right. or I will. You know, I mean, but that's just that's just the way it is. You're not gonna get along with everybody, and that's yep. that's the way it is. But I didn't know. Um, there was always a narrative that, and I didn't really. I don't know if I. I don't know if I believe this or not. But uh, with Josh, you were going to like you 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 were leaving and you took him with you. I didn't know he was going to leave on his own. No, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. It was, so, I didn't know it was like not the other way around, but the other way around. So what what happened was I was thinking about leaving, and then I went because uh, he was also a music major, so he was practicing in a practice room, and so was I. So I went to him. We were just bullshit, and I was like, hey. Just letting you know, I might leave Tep because I'm just not not about it. He was like, I was thinking about leaving also. So he and I discussed a lot about our reasonings. For I don't remember his reasonings exactly. I don't either. Um, the, <laughs> I don't he either. was in for literally like four. Yeah, weeks he, and then he, he left. just he just crossed. He was in and he was out. Yeah, I mean, so so yeah, he and I talked, and then we were like, all right, you know what? It's a lot easier and better for us to go. Cause he was going to, te- I think he was going to text Waldo or whomever was a president at the time. And I was like, I, I, yeah, I was like, don't, don't text him. Can't do that. And it was, was it you that I was talking to? Maybe it was yeah, someone. You, you guys both had to talk to me. We talked up in my yeah. room. I remember, I remember the conversation. Now I was just like, yes, I, I told you, I told you now I, I get it. Josh, I was a little yeah. surprised, but I didn't see that one coming. But yeah, because you lost two littles at the same time. I did. I was. I was. Yeah. No, I was. Uh, not, what's the opposite of an orphan? <laughs> a, a strange. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't know. Know. I don't know. It's like like when you're a parent and your kids die. I don't know if there's a name for it. Um, but whatever that was, that was me. Yeah. So um. So yeah, he was gonna text you saying he was piecing out, and I knew they you guys got like the new shirts in. So I was like, all right, this is a good time for me to go and be like, hey, piecing out. Um. And so I brought him with me. So no, it was completely like separate but he was going to do a text and i was going to go in person i was just trying to figure out how to do it so i took him i brought him with me and that's why i did the conversation but yeah and then again yeah me too he was a great he was a great kid man like oh yeah i love him he was he was so much fun he was a great pledge like that first night he got in man oh Oh, man he had a really good time he had a really good time we all did i mean he was I mean, again, he no, no, no ill will against him either. So if I if I ever ran into him, I don't know if I recognize him. But if I did, he's see, doing up? some great music stuff. Good. I want to go see one of his concerts. Good. But yeah, I know, no, I know you guys he... were friends before. I'm glad to, to see if you guys still keep in touch. Yeah, every once in a while. You pledged him pretty but... hard. I remember that too. Did I? I don't remember. I remember at all. I do. I was never pledge master. I just remember. No, I think I was very no, friendly so with him you on rushed, the. You rushed him pretty hard. Oh, rushed him. rushed him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I rushed him because I really wanted him in. I was like, I need some other guys in music that know my struggles. Yeah. And I was the only music music major in general that joined TAP, at least. I mean, every other music major that we tried getting to join have all dropped out. Yeah. Every single one, including now. So it's, yeah, doing music in the fraternity is difficult, but you can do it. It's a busy, it's a busy schedule. You know, I was, I was a journalism it major, is. which the schedule was... Very easy. Like people say, I had to do this yeah. in college. I go, I didn't do any of that. Like I didn't have like twenty yeah. page papers. I didn't have like term papers or research this. Journalism was such an easy degree for such an amazing yeah. communications like program at school. Like Hofstra was number at the time was yeah. like number two behind NYU or Columbia. So yeah. And plus, I did the radio station. The only thing I really had extracurricular <laughs> other than TEP was the radio station. Like I remember, uh, Got that. we did. It was our pinning ceremony. And I was doing, so it was like a Sunday, and I was doing the sports broadcast for like the new show for the sports thing at the radio station, like in my, you know, um, yep. squire attire. I believe I made a term squire attire. I was wearing squire attire, <laughs> yeah. and like I told the people at the radio, I was like, guys, I have to go. I'll be back. But I have to go for like an hour to do this fraternity thing. And they were like, what? <laughs> it's like, it's like, do you know what we're doing here? Like, this is career advancement. Like, guys, I gotta go make friends. All right, I gotta, I gotta go pay for friends. You understand? I gotta go. Yeah. So I had to, I had to tell Doc Collins, listen, I'll be there. I'll be there for pinning, which is a whole other story in and of itself. I'll, I, I, I'm, like, I'm sure you know this story, but we'll remember this off air. Yeah. Um, it is a cult, by the way. Um, so yeah. after the pinning, they're like, we're going to the diner. I go, I can't go. I go back to the radio station. They're like, it's funny because like Mick was there. Whatever. He's like, what do you mean the radio station? This is, this is tap. 
And I'm just like, guys, yeah. guys, just let me do both. Just fucking let me do both. And yeah, it was, it yeah. was very easy, but it was very easy to do both because I just managed to figure it out and find a way. Yeah, I think a big thing right now is um, you – a big thing when I was there was we were pushing people to be in a separate club other than TEP. One, one for recruitment. It helps a hell of a lot with recruitment. And two, to broaden your spectrum and like do something that's in your own major, which I think is very important. There are obviously fraternities that are like law fraternities and I think APA, like you have the black fraternities, stuff like that. But I mean, being an attorney and then being in something in your major, are, I think very important. Um, but juggling that is hard i mean tep at hofstra right now is juggling a whole lot of shit um so they're they're definitely struggling with balancing that and they have nine guys maybe i guess they're at 14 guys right now um they are and the yeah. hofstra is the hofstra tops the tops on fire has 14 people in it right now yeah they don't like alumni right now so they're not talking to us but um ah, that's they funny. uh yeah, yeah, they got rid of the PM box and everything. Yeah, I heard about that. That's a problem. It, well, they lost it. So. Yeah, I'm sure they did. I'm sure. I'm sure they. So, I'm sure they just burned all of it. That's. that's well, there that's, were some that's, things that's, in there that should have been burnt, but that's a story for I, that's a story for another day. Yeah. The pledge master box, because oh, that was the best. Going to the PM box was so cool because all the history's there. I mean, yeah. I mean, there was nothing, as far as I know, I remember there's nothing crazy crazy it was not like a dead bodies or social security no. numbers or anything incriminating it was just it was just stories and like pledge master journals and there are a lot of bad words and if you don't know Hofstra right now is um Hofstra tep is very lgbtq plus i did hear that driven fine. um I mean, so were we, so, we were undergrad you know we were the, we were the, we were the diverse we were the diverse right, gay we, no. fraternity TEP in general has always been that. Yeah. I mean, we were one of the first all white fraternities to bring in black men. I mean, that yeah, that yeah, was yeah. that's been a thing for a long time. Yeah. But we had TEP Juice, at Hofstra, we had Ash, we had Josh for a time. Um, after yeah. I left, and, we had a, one or two. Yeah, with Latinos. We've always had yeah, a bunch Stevens, of Latinos. Pedro. Uh, the current president is uh, Latino, but no, TEP right now is. I think they have one straight man, if that at this point. <laughs> For that. So, but <laughs> as long as they're alive, as long as they're alive, that's all that matters. They are alive and they are doing a lot of good work, but they're struggling. As I was saying, like they're a very smart group of people and they're struggling to get those smart group of people to say, all right, I need to stop studying. I need to stop going to this other club event to join TEP for a philanthropy event. And it's like, all right, how am I weighing these options? And that's a tough, that's a tough thing saying, all right, instead of going to my club event that could lead to a job, whatever it may be, I'm going to go to a TEP philanthropy event instead. Weighing that is difficult. When you have 15 guys to weigh that, you lose 10 of them, 8 of them. I mean, you're the smallest one already. So, But at Hofstra, I think the biggest fraternity right now is like 18 or maybe I'll say 20 guys. They're all that small. Fraternities are always relatively small. Most of me, 30, 40, I think. When we were there, it was about 40, yeah. The sororities were always huge sororities they had to cap them at hofstra about 60 did they to really they had to cap them? yeah why yeah well they had to cap maybe maybe it wasn't hofstra maybe it was like i don't know because aob got the exception because they were a local fraternity so they could have like 300 girls and it didn't matter for them so maybe it was a um a national thing for the women i don't know but i know there was a cap at like 60 or 65 when i was there and aob was like yeah we don't have to really listen to that but i mean fraternities in general were always 40 i think the highest i saw was 45 and since covid it just plummeted I yeah mean, pand- pandemic wiped out because I mean, you, you couldn't pledge for like two or three classes like pledge classes semesters and if well you, again if they were pledging that, online but still still i mean how many people you actually yeah. gonna get like that and you know you, you lose two or three pledge classes like when we lost you eight guys it was just like oh oh shit. yeah it's starting over we again. Won- we went from 16 to 8 when I left. But again, online was interesting because there were some fraternities that did a lot better online and have gotten down since being in person because they were able to figure out being online, you have such a bigger span of people you can talk to. You're not just talking to people in person. You literally go to the events online, you sit at home, go to an event online, meet people, and then text them afterwards. I mean, 
some people some people could do it really well but then when they came back in person it was a whole different deal they were all just weird and couldn't couldn't handle it but yeah i mean tap is growing is they're doing well i think they got a six person pledge class maybe five person pledge class this semester so there will be just under 20 people at the end of the semester is it is not bad it is a little bizarre terrace you're not gonna lie because a lot of people when they uh leave Hofstra or they graduate and leave fraternity. It's just kind of like, oh, that part of my life is over, right? I'm going to go on, do something else, you know? The fraternity to me was always the men in the fraternity, the brothers, right? The friendships I made that I keep. All the rest of the stuff is kind of like, yeah, well, you know, I'll go back for an event when we're all in our 50s and we go and have a a reunion. But, like, I want to go and see my friends, right? I want to go and see the guys. But you, the opposite, you leave, you come back, and you stay, and then you build the alumni club, and you're still super heavily involved. So take me down that road. You co- you go, you come back, and then you graduate, and you still stick to it. And your just Greek life is still a big, big defining factor of your life. Yeah. Again, when I was when I was an undergrad, I didn't enjoy it a whole lot because of the stuff that I said, I left, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, when I was chancellor slash president um, from my senior year. I went to the grand chapter meeting for national. Um, and that's where I knew what an alum, I didn't know alumni clubs were a thing. And that's when I saw alumni clubs and I was like, Oh, there's like a significant thing going on here. And so I talked to some of them and these chapters are getting, some of them get money for their house. Some of them get, some of them get money for their dues. Some of them just get money from alumni clubs. Some of them just can have alumni come to events. And I was like, well, all these things are great. Why don't we have one? I mean, we were, we're one of the oldest, ongoing chapters for TEP in general. We're the oldest one at Hofstra. I was like, well, how do we not have this by now? We've been around, I mean, go all the back from what we came from SAS. We've been going there since 1940s. So um, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to, and again, leaving and having a lot of people not like me in the chapter, I felt a need to show them that I'm back and I'm back for good. And I'm like trying to help the chapter. So that was also a big thing. I mean, I had one fraternity brother, I won't name names, that said I was the worst thing to ever come from this fraternity and I was going to destroy the fraternity. And so I made it a point to show them wrong. And here I am keeping going. Um, And also, as you said, you were in the fraternity, you were with 15 plus guys and you loved them. And I was like, all right, what other guys do we have? And some of my best friends in the fraternity are now guys that graduate in two, in 1980 something like they've been around for 40 years like boo boo is a great guy tommy murray is a great guy dave matos is a founding father he's a great guy like and i think he was the first pledge master so like i mean i'm meeting all these guys that were legends when we were in the chapter and now i'm putting like name to the face and uh it's pretty cool to see and again a lot of these guys are really well established in their life and i learn a ton when i'm i'm not good at finances at all anytime a finance discussion comes up I sit back and I let them talk, but and I've learned a whole lot of stuff from the national perspective. Same thing. We have accountants that we have an accountant that is um, a huge account for drag queens. So he's been very like on the front lines of what's happening in Tennessee and stuff like that. Um, and then we have uh, people that were in Congress, people that are in Congress. Um, it's it's really a whole big span of people that we have. So. For me, after I started doing it, I was like, oh, yeah, alumni have a lot more connections than I thought in the originally. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of why I kept doing it. It's also another reason you join a fraternity, right, to get connections to the alumni if they're involved, which, which for me was something I learned through pledging. And then as I got into TEP, I was like, oh, some of our alumni don't really do shit. And some of our alumni just uh, <clears throat> are very successful. They're not involved in fraternity. And other alumni really want to be. Um, yeah. Which is what the alumni club. Yeah, the alumni club, a lot of good guys. I love Boo Boo. Boo Boo's a great guy. Like, I remember it was, oh, I love him. It was the, when I was undergrad, I missed 10 10 10, obviously, because I was in high school. But um, we did another one my first semester, the semester I crossed after. So my senior year, no, my junior year, my junior year, we did one. You guys did, you guys did a reunion. You, when... Semester before you, you pledged, we did a 10 10 10 thing. 
And oh, okay. You guys that. did, yeah, you guys did one, you guys did a reunion when I was gone for that one semester too. Yes, we did that as yeah. well at the Hofstra Center or whatever it was on campus. Yeah. And that was awesome because there was, it was this yeah. generation upon generation upon generations. And it is cool meeting these people, right? Because Tep had up all the old um, composites on the wall, like 2007, yep. 2005, whatever. And it's just like, oh, here are these people. And then here they are. And you hear these stories, like when uh, Bishop or Doc come and telling stories about Mick or telling stories about Furtis, who first would still come around. St- me and Furtis still talk. And, you know, Furtis wasn't in a fraternity yeah. with me, but I called Furtis not too long ago. We had, like, an hour conversation about WrestleMania. Like, it was just, <laughs> is this, is this the people you meet from the alumni? Shrute and I were really close for a while. Um, yeah. So it, yeah. Is, it, is, it is very interesting, those connections you can make. So I think the alumni club is definitely a good idea. But, uh, yeah, we're struggling to get the younger generation. We're, we're getting, we're, we have a lot of guys from the 80s. We have a few guys from the 90s. Yeah. Um, and I'm starting to get the people around Ferdy, um, uh, yeah, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, we got you. I used to have Nash, but Nash dropped. Um, so we're struggling with like, I'm trying to get more of the 2000s to now. It's um, a hard sell, I'm not going to lie, Matt. It's a hard sell. Oh, it's absolutely a hard sell. It's very tough for me to sell. Um, especially when we say that we don't have a relationship with the undergrads anymore. I mean, then people are like, well, why, why, why do I need to do this? So it's a hard sell, but if you think about it in the long run, when we all want to get together, what better way to get together than have an alumni club already that has all the connections to do that. And the funding. I mean, and the funding. I mean, it makes sense. And the alumni club makes sense. You guys, you guys gave a very generous donation to Ambiguous Podcast Solutions, which of course, thank you, by the way. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's a great idea on paper. I'll definitely I'll definitely give you that. It's a great idea on paper. It's a great group of guys. You know, just a few meetings I've been in. It's just, you know, I I knew them. I I remember them from the re- the reunions. And of course Boo Boo's a legend, so you're never gonna you're never gonna forget a man like Boo Boo. So I guess what's yeah, the sure. uh, what's the end goal? What do you guys what do you guys want from the club? Uh, well we've changed. I mean, originally when so when I started the club I thought we would be mostly for so joining nationals, which was at the time about 60% of our funds and then uh, for ourselves and then helping the undergrads a little bit. And then when I got people together, they're like, oh, we want to help the undergrads. So we put 60% of our funds for the undergrads specifically. Um, and then recently, meaning November, December, we've decided to part ways with the undergrads because the undergrads said they don't want anything to do with us. So now we are really like, I think our motto is alumni for alumni. So we want to help alumni with issues that they might be having again with ambiguous podcast solutions. Like you guys are trying to do a business created by two or three alumni. And it's like, what better place to help out than alumni that are trying to create a business. Um, And plus we have all the funds to do it now that they haven't been used. And so we're trying to do that, trying to help alumni and trying to get reunions together. Um, we really want to get people in person. So we have a road trip to Nashville coming up in June. And then we used to do like happy hours online during COVID. So we're bringing that back a little bit too. Um, so yeah, trying to get people together and uh, stuff like that. I mean, a big thing that we don't know as younger alumni, but the older alumni know, which is why they're very involved is um, they had one of their pledge brothers, Opie, um, die maybe 10 years ago let's say. And so they said that was the first time in 30 years that they saw each other was at a funeral for one of their pledge brothers. And they were like, that was heartbreaking to be like, wow, all this time we could have been in contact, but we weren't. And some of them found out through LinkedIn that there was a funeral because they didn't know how to get in contact with each other because everyone wanted to go, but they didn't know how to get in contact. So I was like, that would be really shitty if one of my pledge brothers, like knock on wood, something happened. And we weren't talking to each other for 20 plus years. Like it would be nice to have some sort of communication with an alumni club or whatever it may be to keep people involved, get people together. People want to get together every so often, like once every two years, once every five years, just get together, have a fun night out. There are some alumni clubs that every year they do a cocktail hour with like they bring significant others and stuff. And so it's men, women, whatever. And they're all having a great time getting a lot of drinks for free and it's like they're back in their 20s and teens um so yeah that's that's a big thing that i think we don't realize and i think i think that a lot of the guys that we graduated with and a little bit before us in 10 15 years we already see it with like 
Ferdy and uh, and Charlie that they're like, oh yeah, I would like to be in this. It's like I would have been in this if I knew about it. And they've been out for ten years. That's why. I think that's a thing. Is that there's a cycle of ten to twenty years where people want to come back to their roots, if you will, at TEP, and this is going to be the best way to do it. Um, yeah, getting some, there is going to be a little tough. Sometimes it only takes one. You know, Charlie is a Charlie is a great guy. You know, I yeah. I met Charlie once or twice. He's incredibly personal, personable, very successful, and a lot of the yeah. a lot of the guys who are a few little older than us, they all love him. They all adore him. I have never heard someone say one yeah. bad thing about Charlie. Well, maybe one or two, but you know, phenomenal guy. But you know, that yeah. was just him in college. Which hey, there's plenty of bad things you can say about me when I was in college. I mean, there's a few. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> we won't tell those here. I'm sure. Um, no. But yeah, but, like, but. To the point of just keeping in contact, yeah, the best is part of life. You know, I haven't talked to a few yeah. people in your pledge class in a very long time. But then again, if I picked up the phone and said, call them, like, hey, man, how you doing? It would be like we never missed a beat. It would be right. never missed a beat. In fact, I should right. do that. I'm probably going to call someone on top of my head after we get off of here to say what's up. Because, like, um, I mean, that's exactly what you and I are doing right now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we yeah, haven't talked much. to each other in forever. I mean, so. It just it yeah, just pops I mean, up. Life pops up, and it just kind of happens. Like uh, Frodo had a uh, housewarming party. Oh yeah. Um, and of course I went. You know, he invited me. It was just a long trip, a yeah. long trip up to Long Island, but I went. And then they had their fantasy football draft, which I'm not a part of anymore. But like, I heard Waldo was going to be in town, so I text Frodo. I was like, Yo, no, I'm not, no, I'm not part of the league, but can I come? I'm going to be that guy because I want to see Waldo <laughs> and everyone else. You know, like Shrew yeah. was there, Jack was there, Dub was there, Tom was there. Dot com was supposed to be the yeah. COVID, so we called in. But like, you know, I want to <laughs> see all those guys. I had to tell Jazz, like, Jazz, you got to stay home. This is a boy's thing. You know, this, this is a guy's <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're going to yeah. get, get, have some beers and have some fun. And that's exactly what happened. And, you know, it's just good. Yeah. It's good seeing everybody and it's picking up right where you left off after years of just not seeing them. You give them a big hug and you catch up. Yeah. And you tell the same stories you used to tell in college, the exact same stories. It's crazy yep. how things like that just never fucking change. Yeah, and it's funny because I I'm there witnessing hap- it happening with the guys from the '80s, and you know they had a little bit of a tougher process than we did. Yeah, and and hearing uh, it's what so cool like, hearing those stories though, and I was just yeah, like, it's that, like, why did you do that? What was, yeah, what like, was the on. point of this? And most times it's kind of like, well, I don't know, this is what we did. It's, it's what we did. <laughs> there were no phones, so they were like, whatever. They like yeah. it was so different, but yeah, I mean, it's. It's very cool to see, and I, I really think that's what's going to happen with us is that at some point down the line, people are going to lose connection. They're going to be like, all right, what's the best way to get a connection? Probably the alumni club that's been going on for a hot minute. I mean, we're going on almost five years now doing the alumni club, so we're we're growing. We have like 200 people's emails, and then we have 500 contacts that we got to kind of fill in the blanks for. Yeah. But just, you know, we're, just, we're big. Just don't be annoying about it. Yeah, only once in a while. That's the hard thing. You know, it's one thing to reach out, but it's another thing to constantly reach out. Like, you know, if you get, a, you know, if you get ghosted, everyone's been ghosted. Everyone knows that woman who's ghosted them or that man who's ghosted them, you know, and sometimes it's got yeah. like, got it. Um, yep. All right, so before we wrap up here, you also, you were, you were a DJ. Uh, you DJed our parties. Do you still DJ? Yeah. You still do all that fun stuff? DJ I Daddy still have all my Yeah, I still have all my equipment. Um, I think I, before COVID, I was averaging between 12 to maybe 20 gigs a year and then COVID hit. And then, uh, I think I, well, I joined the army and then last year, I think I did maybe five gigs in eight months. So, and I realized during COVID, I was like, you know what? I love DJing. I have a great time. I have another gig coming up in a few weeks, but I'm not, uh, I'm not about the life of losing all of my holidays i was losing new year's like christmas like valentine's day i was losing all the holidays birthdays weekends were gone i mean you knew i was doing dj gigs three days every weekend i was gone for 13 hours a day i I was like you know what that's not the life i want to live so i'm doing it for fun now i get some extra cash here and there and yeah that's kind of what i'm doing with that um keep up to date with all my music yeah that's that's about it i'm doing with that now and, and the army, because that was just, I didn't see that one coming. You know, I know yeah. you, you got into acting. I was like, oh, I can see that. Arts guy, trombonist, DJ, artsy fartsy. But the army, I saw on Facebook, I was like, the fuck? <laughs> the fuck is this about? Yeah. So why, what did you do in the army? What happened? Tell me to the whole process of the army. All right. So I wanted to join the army ever since I was a kid. Uh, my grandfather, both my grandfathers were in the army, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I went the music route. I was not a 
I was not a sports kid at all. Couldn't do it. So I went the music route instead. <clears throat> and then in high school, I had a friend that went to West Point, which is the Army Military Academy up in uh, upstate New York. I was like, oh, that's cool. And I had another friend that did ROTC. I was like, all right. So I have two of my best friends that are in doing something in the Army. That's cool. Um, fast forward, I graduate college and then COVID hits. And I'm like, all right, I'm just kind of twiddling my thumbs, not doing anything. And I saw like an ad pop up on TV. If it was probably the Marines because they do a lot more advertising. I was like, huh, maybe since I have downtime, I'll look into it. So I looked into it. And I realized that there was an army reserves, which is essentially part-time army. And then I realized there's an army reserves band in New York. And I was like, wow, well, that's convenient. It's oddly um, specific. I, yeah. Well, I thought the only bands were like the big bands. I was like, I'm not a great trombonist. I didn't practice for like two years at that time. So um, I contacted a recruiting office and I was like, look, I just kind of want to join the army at this point. I just want to do something extra cash. I needed health insurance, come a freelance worker. You get free uh, tuition and stuff like that. Um, my health insurance is like a hundred bucks a month. I mean, fucking can't, can't get better than that. Mine's 92 a week. Uh, yeah. we well, see. So, um, so I, I, uh, I was looking into that for health Plus insurance and Yeah. I mean, it's, it's great with the army or military in general. So, um, I talked to the recruiter and I was like, if I do this, I'll, I would like to do the band first. If I don't get it, I might want to try the, uh, paralegal route. Cause that's a easy route. I'm doing legal work right now. So, um, I auditioned for the band and I told them that I'm a videographer. I told them I was a DJ, et cetera, et cetera. And they're like, all right, your trombone playing is decent, but if you know how to do all these other things, we can use that we can use you in that as well. So they let me join with the trombone. And then uh, I went through basic training, 10 weeks of boot camp. I had to do 10 weeks of the School of Music, passed both of those, came out March of 2022 from training. And then I jumped right into my band. Um, so once a month, I get to go play my instrument. Um, again, every year we have to still qualify on our weapons. We still have to qualify with our physical test. Um, we. So you, get, you, you uh, still go through like you went through boot camp and all that the whole oh yeah. like like any other oh yeah. service member would. No, yeah. So so essentially, like the people that you think about in the army are the people that are overseas, right? right. That are on the front lines doing the those who, reserves. Uh, the people who work work uh, at the army bases on the country. Like my, my, my cousin is in the military. He's stationed in I think either South Carolina or San Francisco, where he's just on a okay. military base, like training or doing whatever the fuck he does. Yeah, so like yeah. the people on the front line, like everyone goes through the same basic training mm -hmm. because no matter what, you have to be ready to deploy it at any point. So everyone goes to the same 10 weeks basic training. After that, you go to your job specific schooling. So if you're going on the front lines, you're probably going to a much more in depth basic training where you learn more things in depth. Um, and then you have uh, mechanics that go to a mechanic school, you have medics that go to a medic school, et cetera, et cetera. And that's kind of what they do. Um, and so, yeah, so I went through the same basic training. I have to know how to shoot, uh, M4. Um, and every year you have to requalify on that and you have to requalify for your fitness test, um, which they've officially just changed it as of two days ago. It's when it went into effect, um, the new army combat fitness test. So I'll be taking that in about two or three weeks. They make it easier um, or harder? If you... Both. So <laughs> the both. old one is <laughs> I'm gonna be both. So so what they say is it's it's easier to pass, harder to max. So the original one was oh, okay. you have to do the original one. You had to do forty sit ups in two minutes. This is just minimum to pass. So you have to do forty do sit ups in two minutes. Nope. Fifty. Sorry, fifty sit ups in two minutes. Forty push ups in two minutes, and a two mile run in under sixteen minutes thirty nope. seconds. I can't do depending any, on your do, age. That was my age. Those. Can't do any of those. So the new one is six events. So that was only three events. The new one is six events. The first is a deadlift of at least 140 pounds. Nope. Uh, the second one is you throw a ball, a 10 pound ball over your head and you have to go, I think seven meters behind you or something like that. Nope. Then the next one is uh, at least 10 push ups in two minutes. I can do so that. That's, I can do that one. There you go. And then the next one is, um, it's called a sprint drag carry. You have to sprint 50 meters. 
you have to drag a 90 pound sled. So you're, you're walking backwards, dragging it for 50 meters. Then you have to do laterals back and forth, 50 meters. You have to do 40 pound kettleballs in each hand, 40 meter, 50 meters, and then run again for 50 meters. You have to do that in about three and a half minutes or less or three minutes or less. Nope, not me. Uh, a At one all. and a half minute, yeah, a one and a half minute, <laughs> oh, a one and a half minute plank, and then a two mile run in under twenty two minutes. I could probably so, do the plank and the run. So you see how I said it's like easier but harder. There's more There's events, more things to do, but they're easier to do. Right. It's yeah. like instead of doing fi- uh, forty push ups, you have to do ten push ups. Um, but again, that's all done within two hours. So it's mostly testing you to see if you can make it those two hours. All you're doing, that it's a lot of trombone, man. Come on now. Well, hey, your tax dollars pay for it. So I mean, but I still have to be. You so know, do yours. Right? I, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I pay for myself. So oh, it's like a reimbursement right? for me. <clears throat> yeah, oh, right? yeah. But weird. Yeah. But uh, I mean, right? I still have to be. De- I still have to be able to get deployed. I still have to be able to do all of these things. Um, the right, band so if you, is if you, my... were, if you were deployed, you know, God forbid, knock on wood. What would you do? Where would you go? Like, what would happen for the band? For the reserve yeah. band, most likely, I would. From what I've heard, other band units, um, essentially, what they do is they stay with headquarters. So when you're doing military stuff, you have the front lines that are the front lines and then you have other people behind them and then you have headquarters in the middle that everyone's protecting. So the front line moves up, everyone moves up and then headquarters moves up, right? Um, And then if the front line gets down, then more people go to the front line and it just kind of continues like that where more people go. I would probably be with headquarters, making sure headquarters is safe because band units are usually um, meant for morale and yeah. a lot of fun- a lot of funerals. If you're overseas, I mean, just imagine how many funerals are happening. Right. So taps ain't gonna play itself. Well, yeah, they have speakers, but um, so that's kind of what I would be doing for the most part. But in theory, if something happened, I mean, um, there were reserve, mostly National Guard. But January sixth, there was a lot of band members that were in the National Guard that were called to action on January sixth in D.C. So it depends where you are. And National Guard gets deployed more than the reserves do. Um, reserves are, like, especially my units, mostly for, like, I do uh, parades in New York City all the time. Veterans parades, St. Patty's parades, stuff like that. Um, so we're mostly for morale of the country and stuff like that. National Guard is a lot of protection. Um, so, yeah, so there was a lot of people deployed January 6th um, that were in the band. And you just didn't know it, right? We don't have a special patch that, well, we do have a special patch that says band, but it's not very noticeable that you're in the band compared to being in the army. So. Oh, they could use a big base room as a shield. I'm just saying. They, they could. Pushing people. I, I mean, hey, <laughs> I used to play drums. I, I played drums. I played uh, bass in high school, the big bass drum. Oh, yeah. You can smash over someone's head. It hurts. It's yeah. Heavy. I mean, well, I mean, hey, th- they brought that into battle. I mean, this is where the military band comes from. Right? Yeah, I mean, Revolutionary War, they, the, the, the drummers used to like be like signals and commands. And that's exactly yeah. where we come from is that. So it, it's very historic. It's like you're technically the one of the oldest branches in the military then, like one of the oldest regiments, I guess, I don't know the terminology. Yeah, MOS is, is like the terminology for, for the description. I guess so. I mean, I never really looked into like the <laughs> oldest... <laughs> The oldest job in the military, but yeah, I guess you know, being on the front line and stuff like that, um, is yeah, bands were always there, so well, it's it's interesting. Cool, I'm glad I'm glad I now know. But Matt Tercy, we have been going uh, an, a little over an hour. It goes by fast, wow. doesn't it? It does. All right, so before, it really does. Before we go, the final question of the Talking with Tarshik podcast always goes to the guest. So, anything you want to ask me, um. I will answer. I had the right. I reserved the right to plead the fifth, and don't make me lie. So please, by, by all means. Hmm. You can always plead the fifth. All right. Nothing. <clears throat> Let's do. Uh, where do you see your podcast going in the future? Uh, that's a good question. Um, question I have to answer. I have to ask myself all the time. Well. I'm going to keep doing what I always do. You know, I'm going to keep talking to people I find interesting. 
look for ways to make money, look for business opportunities. So obviously, the online club is one of them, of course. I like working with you guys. Um, I hope to have a lot of those guys on this podcast because a lot of the like, FUBU is very interesting. Um, I got to get him to talk a little <laughs> he bit. He just got a job too. Did so. he? Good for him. So I, I, yeah, I had his to, first I job. I got to get him to talk a little bit, but uh, it's interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of want to keep doing what I'm doing. You know, I like making the content. I like talking to people. Um, I like speaking to people from all different fields. Like I had, I had a military mechanic on. I had someone who works with the VA on. I had you on. Um, I had my cousins on. I do fun things with my friends. I have actual conversations with like former cops. You know, I had business opportunities where like the, that police retirement episode, you know, he paid me for that. That was a business opportunity. Um, I like speaking to finance people I meet through work. Um, I had my boss on. That was really cool. So where I see this going is it's gonna it's growing slowly but surely. You know, one day it's gonna pop. Yeah, I'm just waiting for that day to pop. I'm just waiting for the hard work to pay off. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna keep pushing it because this is fun for me. As much as it is work, and it is work, and it sucks, and I hate it. It's still fun. Most of it's fun. This is the fun part. Going back yeah. tomorrow yeah. and listening back and cutting the clips. That's fun. Writing the social copy, posting the social media posts, and doing the TikToks, that all sucks. That's hard. Yeah. I don't want to do that ever again. But until I, until I can pay someone mm. to do it, I'm doing it. So in the, mean, in the yep. short term, I'm just going to keep doing the grunt work. In the long term, I'm just going to do what I like to do and just have fun with it until it finds a way to Hell make yeah. money. So that's, that's the plan. Love it. Anything else? Yeah, Is that wait. all you got? Yeah, that's all I got for now. Yeah, all I'm right. good. Mr. Matt Tersey, thank you very much for your time. On the Talk With Thank you. podcast. Anything you want to plug where people can find you? Um, old Teps want to get in touch with you? Please, by all means, floor is yours. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I my Instagram is Matt underscore Tercy. I think it's two underscores in there. Um, I got uh, Facebook, Matt Tercy Actor, or just Matthew Tercy on Facebook to add me. Um, Tep, if you're around, you can just email me at H-U-T-E-P. Uh, sorry, H. H U T E P alumni at gmail.com is uh, our email address. If anyone wants to get in contact, tap non tap. If you just want to learn about fraternity life, you can let me know and I can point you to the right direction. Um, we have, I'm see, I'm on the fraternity national board of directors and we are connected to the NIC, which is the national fraternity committee, whatever they call it. So yeah, that's me. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Will Tarish. This has been the Talk with Tarish podcast. Another big thank you to my guest, Matt Tercy, a.k.a. Dorsey from Tops on Five, my little brother. Um, thank you again for being on the podcast. Next week, who am I talking to next week? I don't know. I might take next week off. I don't know. I've been doing this a lot. So we shall see, but my, all my nonsense, will at APSpodcast.com. If you want to be a guest on this podcast, email me. Let me know why or find me on LinkedIn at Will Tarashuk. Uh, Instagram, talk with Tarashuk. TikTok, talk with Tarashuk. YouTube, talk with Tarashuk. All the links down below in the description. If you want to support the podcast, hit that GoFundMe link. Drop some cash for your boy at Ambiguous Podcast Solutions. All that money's got to pay off my debt and the business debt and going towards our equipment and building this business as we are a tech startup, we are a startup in general, and we are begging for cash because that's what we have to do in this world that is going to shit. But my name is Will Tower, Shuk and Thomas, A-R-A-S-H-U-K. I'll see you at the next podcast, but until then, y'all take care.